Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Crumbs and today we're going to be taking a look at five tips for end of season climbing. With the end of the season quickly approaching, many of you are making your final push towards your dream rank, whether that's gold so you can get season rewards or challenger after much needed practice. Regardless of where you're trying to finish, climbing at the final stretch of the season can be difficult but not impossible. We'll be diving into key tricks and strategies you can use before the season ends. So let's not waste any more time and dive right into the video. Starting us off strong, let's talk about abusing the meta. We always talk about one-tricking champions and making sure to limit your champion pool. While these are amazing strategies for climbing and ranking up in the long run, it's unlikely you'll be able to use them properly before the season ends. Instead, we're going to dive a bit more in depth when it comes to selecting a champion so that you can grind and reach your ranked goals as well as earn your rank rewards. When we talk about abusing the meta, we specifically mean selecting an s tier champion that is broken during the patch. These champions are extremely likely to get nerfed, but with the season ending so soon, it's unlikely they'll be hotfixed by any means. With that in mind, you can learn the champion and use their overwhelming power to win multiple games in a row. One important thing to note is the difficulty of each champion and understanding why they are labeled as OP or rated S plus in tier lists. Let's look at a current example. If we were going off average win rates in Platinum, Katarina currently has a decently high win rate with a slightly above average ban rate. This places her in the S to S plus tier, but it doesn't necessarily mean you should pick her up to quickly climb. Katarina's kit and playstyle is extremely volatile and can be very difficult to execute if you're not practiced with her. Her win rate being good is from thousands of games in practice where players have improved at her mechanics, laning, and overall playstyle. Compare this to someone like Pantheon mid who, at the moment, holds one of the highest win rates in the game. Yes, his win rate is higher because he's strong, but it's also because he's a hundred times easier than Katarina. When attempting to abuse the meta, stats as well as actual champion kits are extremely important to consider. Since you're likely not committing to this one champion, abusing the meta is all about meeting a few criteria. Let's go down a basic checklist to make sure you can easily abuse the meta and select a champion or two to help you climb. First of all, you're going to want to select a champion with above a 50% win rate. Ideally, you can grab a champ with around a 54% win rate to truly abuse the meta, but it's not always possible. It's best to check stats by looking at Platinum Plus. Make sure you're looking globally so that you can get a decent average. Also, be sure to cross-reference your stat websites with other tier lists or high elo thoughts so you can get a better understanding of the meta. Second, you're gonna want to make sure they have a decently low ban rate, and by that, we mean at least below 15%. Realistically, 15% is really high, but when it comes to abusing the meta, that's what you can expect out of top tier champions. With ban rates being this high, this is exactly why we recommend only playing 1-2 to two champions. Not only will you improve at said champion faster, but it'll give you an option when one of them gets banned. Finally, make sure the champion's kit isn't too complicated and doesn't have an extremely difficult playstyle. Sure, Neela may have a 52% win rate at the moment, but you'll have to learn her mechanics, her laning, and make sure you can kite with her melee attacks. You could do that, or you can go for Jin, who is sitting at a 51% win rate and has an extremely simple kit. The amount of time you'll spend understanding these champions is vital to how low of a time frame you have before the season ends. The TLDR? Try not to go for the flashy complex characters. Before we continue on to our next role, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. We offer tons of guides and videos to help you take your gameplay to the next level. If courses and lessons aren't your thing though, don't worry, we have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the Pro Guides family. Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive back into the video. Our next key tip is limiting your games played. We know, we know this seems a bit counterproductive since you're looking to grind your rank up, but it's actually really important. Spamming 5 plus games each and every day on your account is not beneficial for anyone. Not only is it bad for your LP gains, but it will ruin your morale and make you hate playing the game. The less fun you have playing League, the worse off you'll be grinding your ranked games out. As you spam games, you'll often get tired and or tilted. Once you reach this point, you'll perform worse and end up being a detriment both to your team and yourself. 
Instead of going in with the mindset that you need to win your next 20 games in a row, break it up into smaller victories with minor goals. Alongside this, try not to play more than 3 games a day max. This doesn't mean you can't play more than 3 league games, but have 3 super try-hard games and then spend the rest of your time either reviewing, practicing, or just having fun. With these strategies, you'll be able to spread out your gameplay so that you're maximizing when you feel best. Grinding your games out at your very best mental will always be better than mindlessly spamming ranked matches. Remember, we're looking for quality matches, not quantity. This is especially true near the end of the season, where one big loss streak because of exhaustion or tilt can set you back weeks worth of progress. Next up, we've got the tip of using your dodges wisely. Dodging overall is seen as very taboo, but it has become a necessity to climbing at higher ranks. Usually, high-ranking players dodge to avoid bad team compositions or matchups that could single-handedly lose the game. For the more average player, we don't expect you to know the ins and outs of every matchup, champion, and team composition. Instead, your dodges are best used when scouting your allies. When you load into the lobby, it's best to look up your allies, so you can see if it's worth dodging. Remember how we said spamming games is dangerous? This is a key way to spot someone who is on a 5-game losing streak. While we do believe they can win their next one, it's more than likely that they're both tilted and exhausted. Save your LP and dodge to ensure your next victory. Another key dodge indicator will be too many autofill players on your team. More often than not, you'll have one person that's filled, and whether they do good or bad is a coin flip. With one bad player on an off roll, teams can still function and win. However, if the Rito Gods have smited your lobby and turned it into two or more field players, it's your time to dodge. There are a ton of other great reasons to dodge games. You can dodge because you're your team's only carry but you're countered. You can dodge because of really bad team comps. There are even times where you'll have to dodge because someone is forefunding the lobby. No matter the reason, you now know some key indicators of when to dodge. But the question we haven't asked yet is... Do you know why dodging is important? Sure, you'll save some LP. I mean, who doesn't love losing 3 to 10 LP instead of 18? Winning and losing games for LP is important, but what's vital is preserving your MMR. Your MMR is what determines whether you lose 20 for each loss or just 16. It's what'll make climbing a bit easier as you transcend past plus 15 and instead go up to plus 18. MMR may not be as important due to how close we are to season end, but it's still something to consider during your climb. You technically have two dodges every day, use them if you have to, and save yourself your hard-earned LP. Now before we move on, let's not forget about our favorite Pro Guides tradition. Today we want to ask you all, what is your ranked goal this season, and how have you been working to achieve it? Regardless of what your answer may be, let us know in the comment section down below. Nonetheless, let's dive right back into the video. Up next, we've got the key tip of communicating. And no, we're not talking about flaming your allies as a form of communication. League is a team game that requires everyone to work together in one way or another. Matches work best when all five players are trying to win and have good morale. Everyone makes mistakes, everyone loses matchups. The important thing is to communicate and keep trying. Sometimes, during your solo queue games, you'll have to be the shot caller. It will be up to you to ping when you're going for Dragon or Baron. It'll be your call whether your team fights mid or splits into a 1-3-1. It is up to you to ping your allies away from bad plays and to let them know when your laner is roaming or that the enemy jungler is ganking. Communication is what takes League above and beyond and can make a massive difference each game. If you're able to talk with your allies and develop a game plan, you can all work together to execute it. If someone is slowly getting tilted and upset, reassure them that the game is not over and tell them your win condition. You will occasionally run into someone that no matter what will play to lose out of tilt, boredom, or anger. Do not let them ruin the mental of you or the rest of your allies. Instead, adapt and provide a new plan. Is your top laner only split pushing and dying? Fine, it's time to play to the opposite side of the map and try to make plays when they get caught out. Is your AD carry or mid refusing to group? Fine, let's group around them so that if a fight breaks out, they are nearby and can respond. Communication and the way it's delivered is important. Make sure you're not being sarcastic and condescending with your communication. 
If you're pinging someone, don't spam ping on top of their heads multiple times. It'll only annoy them and cause them to ignore future pings or mute you altogether. Instead, ping danger on top of them, then ping a few times where said danger is coming from. This grabs their attention and focuses it on the main danger. Overall, be sure to communicate with your allies. Believe it or not, they are there to win just as much as you are. Before we continue on to the end of the video, climbing can be hard and sometimes you'll need help or someone to play with. If you want to join an amazing community of people like you that love lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. So what are you waiting for? Join us. Last, but certainly not least, we've got maintaining your mental fortitude. All of these tactics are valuable, but nothing beats keeping yourself focused and tilt-free. League is a game that can cause a lot of frustration, anger, and overall, unhappiness. We all love the game, but when handled incorrectly, it can be fairly detrimental. Climbing is something everyone can do, and it's important that you realize you will improve. If you're willing to put the work in, you will get better. Don't put yourself down because of a bad play, a bad game, or a bad rank. Do not let others tilt and hurt your worth. You are improving because you have taken initiative. It doesn't matter that anyone else sees that or understands it. As long as you continue to improve for the better, that's what matters. We as humans always make mistakes. Don't let yours haunt you and try not to terrorize others about theirs. It's important that you give yourself space to breathe, relax, and focus. Having a clear and stable mental will help you climb faster than ever. Take care of yourself and we promise your LP will rise. And that sums up our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to join our Pro Guides family over at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you just won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, good luck on the rift and may the LP gods smile down upon you.